93.5 FM. Kite Show Radio. Diana, join me on the Glen Lal Show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7:20 p.m. and a rebroadcast at 11 a.m. The Glen Lal Show only on Kite Show Radio, 99.1 and 99.5 FM. And we begin with our president. Our young president, Dr. Irfan Ali. He does not hold press conferences. Every time he wants to say something to the nation, he sits in front of a camera, talk to himself, fight with himself, and point his fingers to the wall on all four sides, to the right, to the left, <laughs> in front, and the back. Mm -hmm. He talked through today. He talked through the computer to the Guyanese people. I don't know what he said, but I was told about his actions. I, my staff told me, so please don't. Um, if you listen to him, please don't blame me for saying that he was gesticulating and pointing to the wall. But you can hear him. Just Google, just go on the president's page, and you'll see what he told the nation today. I want to tell you, Uncle and Auntie, that Guyana has become a one-man zoo, where the whole country gets a weekly one-hour package, a puppy show. One man jumping up and down, swimming from branch to branch. Trying to pick at every spectator, every visitor who jeers him, points at him, corrects him, or annoys him. Bara Jagdev started out his one-hour weekly puppy show yesterday, swinging left, right, and centre at Kaicho News, Glenlal, and his reporters. Uncle. Kaicho News made a mistake with an article we carried saying that Guyana purchased two planes for the money of four. That reporter made a mistake in the conversion of Indian rupees to the U.S. dollar and wrote that story, which was corrected and placed on the front page of today's Kaicho News. Man, uncle and auntie, you had to hear how Jagde went on at his press conference on that mistake Kaicho News made. He called on people not to purchase the Kaicho paper, not to buy it anymore because we only tell lies. Imagine a man like Bara Jagde, who has no truth in him, none whatsoever, in anything he do or say, finds one mistake, one error the newspaper made, and having Christmas in April with that. This vice president does not go prepared every week to address the hundreds upon hundreds of wrongs he and his government does every day that is being pointed out in the newspaper daily. But when the newspaper make a slip, Jack Day ready to tear up the newspaper, the owner and the reporters. You know, Uncle, I was so happy listening to him yesterday. There have been so many issues the Kaicho News would have reported over the past weeks. And I never get the time to inform you people about them. So, I will do that tonight. I will list some of the headlines that he holding press conferences every week and never go prepare to deal with any one of them. Before I do that, hear how he behaved, how he went on yesterday about the mistake the Kaicho News made. 
Kevin, could you please play it? So, last week I explained, and I played a tape here, where Coretta McDonald said that India bought some aircrafts from another place, India, not from an Indian company, India bought it from somewhere, and then resold it to the government of Guyana at 30 million dollars. And this is a massive corruption. Massive corruption by the government of Guyana. That's it for her. Patterson was on the same program and Patterson said, no, it's not, it's not 30, it's 28 million dollars, the two aircraft. Okay? So, I pointed out that the two aircraft cost us $16 million and $8 million each, and the rest was spares and training and transportation, etc. So Kaichur News left here and they went back and they published an article. Guyana borrowed to buy two airplanes for the price of four. Two airplanes. So they said they had an excerpt right from the Economic Times, and this was it, that the Indian government bought for the army from this Indian company, six of these aircraft at 667 crore, which is an Indian denomination crore. And if you convert the 667 crore, it works out to 30 million dollars. And then they divided the, the 30 million, 31 million by, by six and said, we could have gotten four aircraft. Now, it, I think they were hoping to justify because they went back and justify what, what um, Coretta McDonald and Patterson were saying. But don't you have any pride don't you have any pride? If you go online and just use a currency converter, anybody can use it, a child can use it, and you input this 667 crore, you will see that it comes out to a US dollar value of 80 million, not 31 million, which dunce in the Kaichor news can, can't use a converter, and it's a headline. Borrowed two to buy two airplanes for the price of four. So there's a, you can't say anything else, but this is a dunce because you can just go online and convert it. Now people can make mistakes. Coretta makes these mistakes all the time, and, and Patterson, because they're politicians, and, and if it was a man's, I could understand. A man's and holder. They got a, a proclivity to doing this all the time. But it's a newspaper, for Christ's sake. Can't you just use a currency converter? Because if you take now 80 million, that is what the Indian government paid for the six aircraft, and you divide by six, you're actually getting 13.3 million per aircraft. So we bought the aircraft for 8 million, so we picked the Indian government pocket, right? So we get it cheaper by half than what the Indian government paid. But you understand, we bought the basic version and they bought an upgraded version. That's the difference. But they paid 13.3 million US and we paid 8 million for the same aircraft. But they said, the headline, Ghana borrowed to buy two airplanes for the price of four. You can't even 
use numbers. You can't even use numbers and you don't have pride. You hear who talking there, uncle? Now, don't get me wrong, auntie. If a newspaper makes a mistake and anybody points it out, the right thing I always tell my editors to do is apologize and correct them. Media business is based on trust and facts. And I'm happy that Jack Dave point that mistake out to us, which I said was corrected in today's newspaper. I wish he would do what the Kaicho News does when mistakes and errors are pointed out day after day in the Kaicho News. But he makes no move to address them, to correct them, or to say or do anything about them. You know, I'll put up this front page of last Friday. The same day when that plane story was reported, Uncle, which was last Friday, the lead story of the Kaicho News was, Government secretly moved to CCJ to reverse our appeal court decision blocking them from joining Exxon in the fight against those two Guyanese. Imagine, uncle, this is the biggest and most important issue in this country at the moment. Because an oil spill can bankrupt the whole country and left Guyana. All of us indebted to the region for hundreds of years. Just for not having full protection from Exxon Parent Company. Uncle, when a leader can stay silent on something like that, what else he can talk about? Tell me, that was the lead story. Above the plane. <laughs> but he didn't speak about that. He didn't even tell us anything about that. He didn't even tell us he get the attorney general to sit down in front of a camera trying to mamboozle the Guyanese people. Telling us Guyana got laws to make Exxon pay. If an oil spill happens. Then telling us not to worry. Exxon will take care if an oil spill happens. Uncle, if Exxon will take care of an oil spill, why they don't put it in writing? And the next question is, if they will take care of an oil spill, why is Anil and Jack Day running to fight against our court of appeal ruling. Huh? To fight against the two Guyanese. Why? Jack Dale not saying anything about this. But like I said, he's ready to cost down the newspaper. <laughs> oh. That same day, uncle. Oh my, tell the world. How... They will produce over 2 million ounces of gold within 13 years from only one mining pit. Hear that? Walking away with more than Guyana debt. More than what we owe. As a matter of fact, it's three times what Guyana owe. They will be walking out Guyana, Guyana with from one single mining pit. Jack Dave didn't say anything about that at his press conference. He doesn't want the Kaichur news to report on these things, uncle. <laughs> but he finds time to ridicule the reporter for converting the Indian rupee and made a mistake. Now let's turn to Saturday newspaper the next day after the plane story. 
Listen the headline. Exxon and the EPA dodging scrutiny of the parliamentary committee. <laughs> the committee in parliament that responsible for scrutinizing scampishness, shenanigans, skullduggeries, and wrongdoing. <laughs> They have been trying to sit down with the EPA and ExxonMobil to find out what's going on in the oil and gas sector. Guess what, uncle? That same parliamentary committee said, Exxon and the oil ministry has been ducking and hiding. Jack Dave didn't respond to that. Sunday's newspaper headline, the next day, ExxonMobil, daily, daily production questionable as company refuses to show auditors the meters. You hear what I said there, Kevin? The production data questionable because they, they don't want to show the auditors the meters. Jack Dale does not turn a face and twitch him out when he hears stories like that. Or I should say he does twitchy, twitchy face and turn a tongue when he hears stories like that. That same Sunday, uncle. Next headline. ExxonMobil took out Guyana's oil profit for Wales gas plant. You hear me? For Wales gas plant that they are not building. How you like that? How you like that, Uncle? Exxon taking out money for the gas plant that they are not building. <laughs> Exxon also deduct deducted oil profits, our oil profits, for the pipeline them laying to Wales before this project was approved. Is not Kaicho News saying that, Uncle? The auditors found out that. Kaicho News only report the findings of the auditors there. Jack, they don't respond to these things. But you're ready to jump on the Kaicho News mistake. That same day, Sunday, Kaicho News reported another story on the front page. Where Anthony Vera, who is part of the PPP, said PPP manifesto promised to renegotiate the oil contract was nothing but a fraud. And the man went on to say how he regrets being a candidate in the 2020 elections for the PPP. Uncle? <laughs> You know, Jack Dave didn't left that dung at his press conference. He picked up that one and abused down Vera. But did not address the two ExxonMobil stories. Let's move to Monday. Monday gone. You know, I'm so happy that he, he repent to Kaicho News for making a mistake. It gives me an opportunity. To bring out some of these stories that I don't have time to even tell you about. Let's move to Monday Gun. Before oil began pumping, Guyana paid over 27,000 US daily between 2015 to 2017 for ExxonMobil helicopter services, Uncle. You hear that, Kevin? 27,000 US a day for the two year. That's 700 and something days. Seven, seven, total, oh gosh. $27,000. 5.4 million Guyana dollar for helicopter service daily, uncle. The auditors pointed that out. This is what Jack Dave should have been addressing. Why Guyana pay $5.4 million a day for helicopter services? What were they doing, Kevin? How many trips were being made onshore and offshore? And who counting these things? 
Man, Kevin, that two-year money. <laughs> Maybe he could have buy a hundred helicopters. Uncle, these are the things Jack Dave should be addressing. Because it's our oil profits being spent there. But when he hear ExxonMobil name or anything to do with ExxonMobil, he gets very rude, annoyed and hostile. Why, uncle? Yesterday, my reporter asked him if he's one of the beneficial owners of the Kaichur and Kanji oil blocks. You have to hear how he behave and swing back the question to the reporter, asking the reporter if Glenn Lal and the reporter have shares in it. Kevin, please play it. Let the nation hear him, man. Final, final question. Okay, all right. My final question is that some folks are alleging that you might be one of the beneficial owners in the Kaichur and Kanji block. Can you deny or confirm? I'm not a beneficial owner in the Kaichur and Kanji block, but you see, this is what. So they asked me a question that's totally outrageous, and then tomorrow's headline would say, Jack Deo denies being an owner in the Kaichur and Kanji block. That is precisely why he's asking me, so then they can put that headline. I, I heard Glenn Lal is the owner. Is that so? And you have some shares too? So you should put, when you put that, say Jack Dale questioned whether Glenn Lal and the reporter own some shares in the, in the Kaichor and Kanji block. Any, yeah, you would like to get some shares there? Well, all right, so maybe, but you, do you have any? Oh, okay. And so you, please put in the article too that Jack Dale asked the reporter whether he has shares too or Glenn Lal has shares in this. This is, this is precisely um, what, what they do. So you get that planted and then could put the headline tomorrow. Then I'll ask him. I know, I know what's going to happen. Predictable. Thank you. <laughs> what is outrageous about that question, uncle? If he promised this nation since he took office in 2020 to investigate and tell us, and he has not done so. We are in 2024. Isn't that a fair question, auntie? But you hear how he answering that question? By asking the reporter back the question. That is what the leaders of Guyana have become. Them Kaichur and Kanji oil blocks are what got, is what got many of them silent in this land. Those same two oil blocks, uncle and auntie, Exxon bind them hmm. <laughs> with tons of secrets that cut out their tongues when they have to speak about Exxon Mobil. Let's move to Tuesday, Kaicho News headlines. Exxon, Exxon, eight new discoveries are possibly the total oil Trinidad and Tobago produced in 100 years. <laughs> the headline came from the opposition. Uncle and auntie, Exxon made eight brand new discoveries and Jack Dale not telling Guyana anything. Why he doesn't want to talk about that, uncle? <laughs> Kaicho News, learn about that going through the Chinese documents. Is it Chinese who said one of the eight fines is almost one billion barrels? You hear that, uncle? One billion. Why Jack Dale not telling this nation that? Have you got any idea, uncle, how much money that one fine is? A billion barrel of oil. And that, and that uncle must be the smallest one out of the eight. One billion barrel today at eighty dollar, ninety dollar barrel today. Man, 
if it's 80 or 90, it's 80 or 90 billion US dollars we're talking about. And Guyana got five, less than 5 billion debt and can't pay it since independence. Why Jack, they're not addressing these things, uncle? Tell me, auntie. How can these things not be important? Busing down newspaper for making a simple mistake is what is important to this vice president of this country. The same Tuesday, uncle. I talked about this story last Wednesday night on my program. The last program I talked about it. But let me repeat it. One are you, regional executive officer, tell the parliament he can't remember how $63 million in contracts were awarded without public tendering. And told the people at parliament all his knowledge of the tender process was thrown out the window when he left office. You hear that? Jack Dave should hold a special press conference for deal with that. He should have even call it the police if he's serious about accountability, transparency, honesty, and decency. But he didn't say anything at his press conference yesterday. Let's move to Wednesday's headline. Put up the front page, let them see it, man. The lead story after the Attorney General said, the court can't tell the government what guarantee they must demand from ExxonMobil from an oil spill. International lawyer Melinda Janke responded to him. She told him, government is not above the law. Government must act in the best interests of the people and not foreign companies. You know, uncle, if you ask me, Jack Dale doesn't believe the court have any right for decide what them do for this country. Government is above the law. I believe that. He totally ignore what that international lawyer said <laughs> at his press conference yesterday. Also, another story we carried the same Wednesday. This is only Wednesday gone. These headlines that I'm talking about is within one week. I ain't go back two months or three months. This is just a week. ExxonMobil under investigation in Australia following a ruptured gas pipeline. When I saw that, I said, God help Guyana. If that pipeline them running to Wales develop a leak somewhere in the area where people lives, God be with them. You guys see why full protection is required in this country with this oil and gas business, uncle? It's life and death we are playing with here. That's what we are playing with. And those foreign companies are known for pick up, pack up their bag, and walk away. Especially if you have color, like Glenn Lal. You know what I'm talking about. This is what Barra Jagdeo should be talking about at his press conferences. But where is he? <laughs> Growling over an honest error. Growling over an honest error. And people who are honest to point out their faults. Let's move to the next headline, Wednesday. The foreign contractors take Guyana to court for 90 million US for delays in the Wales gas project. That one... Jack Dale choose to respond yesterday, blaming ExxonMobil for the delay. Not the government. You hear that? He blaming ExxonMobil. 
I want to know when the judgment come out at the end of this, all this arbitration and court proceedings. Who will win and who will pay the judgment? Let's wait and see. I don't know if ExxonMobil signed any contract with the people who are building the power plants. Because I know Exxon has nothing to do with the power plant. Exxon is just supplying the pipeline to the plant, uncle. Them just, them job is just to connect the hose to the power plant. So how Jack Dale telling us is Exxon Mobile fault? Man, nah, uncle, we are in too much trouble in this land. Before I go to yesterday's headline, let me also tell you, Jack Day went prepared at his press conference for Moses Nagamutu yesterday. And guess, Kevin, what he got prepared for? Nagamutu, write a book. Man, man, uncle, he, this, this man got a fine views down from Jack Day. Jack Day even tried to read a piece. What Freddie Kisun write about the book in the Guyana Chronicle? Yes. That same Freddie Kisun who now turned one of his lap dogs. Jack Day even talked about a piece Sam Hines write about Moses Nagamutu in the Guyana Chronicle. Poor fella. Poor fella. He is so taken up with anybody who he see as a challenge or makes him look less without saying a word. Moses Nagamutu write a book and that become his topic of discussion at a press conference. You guys can believe this thing? Hmm? We are losing billions of US dollars yearly in that oil sector alone. People starving in this country. People barking in the yards and on the streets for food. And here this man in charge of we oil sector. Wasting time at a press conference talking about a book an ex-prime minister write. After this program, Uncle and Auntie, I will play his entire press conference so you people can listen to what he addressed and how he addressed the nation. This fastest growing economy on earth, Uncle. Man, when you listen to his press conference, you will not only get an understanding of where Jack Day will take in Guyana, you will also feel the malice, the venom in him attacking people. This man reached at the top of Guyana's leadership. But when you listen to him, uncle, his mind is at the bottom of the pit. He can't help himself. Let's move on to yesterday's headline. Yesterday's headline. The lead story. The auditors found that ExxonMobil bought materials to the tune of 40 million American dollars that could not be verified. In which the government had no say. You hear me, man, Kevin? ExxonMobil ripping we off. And Jack Dale had nothing to say about that at his press conference yesterday. But responded to a mistake Kai Cho News made. You didn't hear what I said, Uncle. 40 million American dollars, the auditors said, ExxonMobil spent on materials that they couldn't verify. You hear me, man? Jack Dale didn't say nothing at his press conference. And Guyana living in blackouts. <laughs> I wait and see what's coming. 
What's in store for you with this man leading this land? Not a single word, Kevin. Jagdeer didn't say the press conference about that. I must tell you, Auntie, and we should give him a round of applause that this same audit report that he promised one trillion times to release, he finally tell the reporters yesterday he released them to the public. You hear that? You hear how much time we had to ask him? A million times. So far, one is posted. The other one, only the executive summary is up. <laughs> My reporters had already gotten, we had already gotten a few peaks. Peaks. We, were, we, we had a little peak at the report. That's how we can report on that same 40 million and them helicopter charges. Money spent on drill ships for the Kaichur oil block. Money spent on Zumba dance. Paying school fees for Exxon Mobil. Paying fun day and go-kart races. Christmas parties. Hosting staff parties. Social media ads. Trips for government officials. Blah, blah, blah and blah, blah, blah. But now, Uncle and Auntie, seeing that he released the findings, we will get to see more of what the auditors discovered. Jack Dale had to be asked. Since the auditors discovered all those skullduggeries, uncle, what has he or his government done so far at his press conference yesterday? Please listen what he said. Can you state what actions or decisions your government has taken in relation to the findings, in relation to the findings of both oil audit reports? That's the last question. What do you audit? What do you audit? Report again? All right. Which? Oil were taken by the government regarding the findings. There is only one action you can take. I told you already. It's the technical staff either agree or disagree with the finding. The technical staff. How many times do I have to explain this? Yes, yes, oh yes, on the second audit, yes, 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 if that, but... Yes, yes. No, they did not, they did not say that. We have indicated to them that we can't reach agreement, so we have to now move to this. But the second one, we have identified already, and thank you for explaining this now, so that the second one, we have the findings, they were written to by the technical agencies, not by the politicians, to give comments on their findings. Hmm. You heard how he reacted when he heard the word audit, uncle? And when the reporter explained what the question was about, then he boiled down and said, oh, the technical people have written to Exxon to explain the skullduggeries. Imagine Exxon Mobil, Hunch, Guyana. Hundreds of millions of American dollars that the auditors questioned and pointed out. And reporters have to ask this man who is in charge to give Guyana to give this nation an update. And you heard his tone of voice. Like you can't ask this man nothing when it comes to ExxonMobil and skullduggeries. It's like you're interfering with his, with his pocket or what. I don't know, I'm just asking. Yesterday again, he was asked, hmm, by my reporter, 
this story more sweet. When will the gas to show documents be tabled in Parliament? From the beginning of this gas to show project, I have told you people many times, this is a dead donkey that are already smelling. But you all not seeing it or smelling it. You all only hearing about it from Glenn Lal. And recently the opposition started talking about it. Everybody been asking Jack Dale to show the proof how this investment he going to make on, his ga on, on this gas plant will cut electricity by half. That's all this nation asking for. Give the nation the evidence. Now that, now that is the document Parliament requested from the government. And honestly, Uncle, Glenlal never knew that when the opposition requests something in Parliament, <laughs> they can't ask back more than they can't ask more than one time. You know that, Kevin? If the opposition asks the government for a document, they can't ask back. So whether they get it or they don't get it, they can't ask back. <coughs> I never knew that. Hmm. Uncle, I don't think I understand what I said just now. If the opposition asks the government to answer a question or to present a document in parliament on any issue and the government don't respond, the opposition is not allowed to ask back the same question. The Speaker of the National Assembly shuts it down. <laughs> so, when the opposition asked for the Wales Gas Project information, nothing was presented and they can ask back for it. So when I heard that, I told my reporter to ask Jack Dale at his press conference when he will present the Wales Gas Project documents to Parliament. You have to listen. <laughs> How he answer the question? Play it, let him hear. When will the gas to energy agreement... Oh, okay. I, 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 maybe, maybe soon. I don't know. I don't know. That's um, for Gail to share and the others to develop. But we have tabled a lot of things. We're going to table. We, we, it's almost everything that you see in the agreement. You know. You know. So I don't. I. We told you the price. Seven hundred and six fifty-nine million dollars. That's the price. We told you the, um, the timeline for implementation. You know how many turbines and what is the size of the turbine. Almost every component of the agreement, you know what the liquidating damages are. We're going to get the same situation. You, do you know how many agreements we table routinely? And nothing comes out of them. It's the same gap the opposition has. When you don't have anything to say, you just say, oh, we don't have enough information. This is a lazy set of people. Lazy. Oh, we don't have enough information. They didn't have enough information on ring fencing. They don't have enough informa information on contracts that they sign. It's lazy. And so we are not going to be... You recall Ramatar tabling? all the agreements relating to Amila, every, a big set of documents showing the environmental studies, the, the feasibility study, the design study, everything, and what came out of it. They didn't read a single bit of it. You get from Patterson now that the power would have cost 30 cents per kilowatt hour. When I show that it's mathematically impossible because you're gonna have uh, 1,300 gigawatt hours and multiply by 30 cents per kilowatt hour, that's 400 and something million US dollars per annum when, to pay the contract, the, the supply of power, when our cap was 100 million dollars. I pointed this out. Anybody doing simple mathematics can do that. 
but he lies about it and he gets prominence and gets reflected in the newspapers. I'm done with helping this opposition. And, and, and some of the people who you have to, you have to sort these things out yourself. So it, it will be. Uncle and auntie, when I hear Barra Jagdil, start stuttering, mumbling for words when question put to him. I you know, I you heard him when, when the vice news reporter questioned him about Sue. Oh, 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 Sue, 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 Sue. You heard him just now? Uh, may, maybe, maybe soon. That's a guilt to share a thing. He told us the price. $759 million. He told us the timeline. How many turbines? Almost every component we know. No, no, Mr. Vice President. No, 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 sir. The opposition and the Guyanese people wants to see the document. The entire document with the details of how this Wales gas project will cut electricity by half that you're claiming. Why should this be such a big deal? What is in the document that you don't want us to see? If you are so confident as you speak, then let the entire nation see the document. That project document, Guyana uncle, may very well get to see it. Only if I remove him from office. He jumped to Ramotar and the Amelia Falls Hydro Project document. Uncle and auntie, <laughs> my gosh. Hadn't we seen that project document, we would have never known that that project would have cost six to ten times the world market price at the time. That's why the project didn't kick off. He was going to throw Guyana into a Borbis Bridge situation, squeezing the nation to full private people packet. Mm-hmm. The same thing with the Marriott Hotel. Yes. Build the Marriott Hotel. Install secret players. Bleeding the taxpayers dollars. To maintain the hotel and pay them secretly. That's the deal he was going to throw. On Guyana with that Amelia Falls Hydro project. And I am proud to say here tonight. Glenn Lal. Is the one who educate the opposition at the time that came out and put a halt to that project. By now, hmm, by now some of them would have turned billionaires in US dollars. And you, the Guyanese people, would have been bawling to pay light bills. He bringing it back with a different scheme. I don't know if you guys remember when Winston Brassington was briefing the energy conference last year. <laughs> he was telling the nation, or I should say, telling, telling the nation, Guyana has to put no money in that project. And Guyana has minimal, minimal risk. But behind his back, the slide on the television screen was showing in fine writing hmm. if an earthquake or any natural disaster happened and broke up the plant uh -huh. Guyana has to foot all the bills this is a scheme this is the game they're playing with us with every project I did a tiktok on that to show you people how deceitful they are with that project, the Amelia Falls project. But for them, electricity bill can be cheap. Let's see how cheap this plaster to the sore of blackouts in Guyana will be. They bring in from Turkey. Yesterday he announced it at his press conference. They bring in a barge 
<laughs> They're bringing a barge, uncle, to go in the Barbies River to supply 36 megawatt. I'm going to give you a little brief on that just now. <laughs> oh, boy. Kevin, a million times you got to ask to get the Google contracts. Remember? A million times also to get two audit reports. Uh, and maybe another million times to get the wheels gas document. To see whether Guyanese peeing in the wind or where we peeing. Another million times to get the Amelia Falls hydro project too. And it might be two million times to see. This Turkish deal, that same barge they're going to put on in the Barbies River, he, according to Jack Dewey yesterday, will be just in a couple of weeks. Hmm. Uncle, para Jack Dewey not answering questions, does not produce documents and evidence, does not respond to newspaper reports, does not conduct himself like a national leader anymore. You got an idea where this man is taking Guyana? And I don't know why you people are so silent. Headlines after headlines. Day after day. New story, old story, same story from Jack Dale. You're getting nothing out of him except abuse, dung and a cuss out. That's his style of management and his way of life. Let's turn to today's newspaper. Today, Friday, April 12th, uncle. The king of Exxon. Not the one we have in Guyana. The real king in America. Darren Woods. Was proud to tell the world. Look how beautiful Exxon is doing. 36 billion US in profits for last year. Let me repeat. The headline was. The man proud to tell the world, ExxonMobil made 36 billion American dollar last year. And Guyana played a huge part in that. With the increased oil production of in the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> oh, Kevin, I love Guyana. Who is boasting about billions for Guyana? The owners of that oil. Who? Who boasting, Kevin? Hmm? Who boasting, Auntie? The owners of that oil that is living with 4.5 billion US dollar debt and went and borrowed another two and a half for this year budget. Who boasting? Instead, we leaders boasting. We leaders abusing. Those of us who are asking them to do something so that all of us can boast at the same time. Did I say Namaste? Namaste, Uncle Nanti. He told Guyana yesterday that a Turkish company will set up a barge in the Barbies River to supply 36 megawatt of electricity. To help GPL and to ease the blackouts. But didn't tell us the company name or the cost until he was asked by a reporter. And his explanation to the deal they are about to sign with the company made me smile, uncle. You guys going to listen to the press conference, man. He said... He could predict Kaichor News headline for tomorrow. <laughs> I want to tell Jack Dale, when he speaks, Glenn Lal and many others like myself already know where he's coming from. The scheme, the scheme he's pulling Guyana with. 
Here, here the story tell Guyana. The electric power barge will cost Guyana 8 cents or less than 8 cents per kilowatt per hour. But Guyana has to pay for the fuel. <laughs> I don't think uh, you got a clue what a man said there. Somebody's pocket is being secured handsomely for the next two years with this deal. We're going to have to wait and see how much fuel that barge will be using to generate 36 megawatt of power. Uncle and auntie, your oil money might not even be able to pay for it. It's like you call a taxi service to do a $500 job and the dispatcher tell you <laughs> $400. But you got to put gasoline in the car and the cost for the gasoline is $2,000. <laughs> So you ended up, <laughs> you ended up paying $2,400 for a $500 job. I only share one week headline with y'all, uncle. If I have to go back a month, y'all can't absorb it. It's too much. <laughs> Fuel, uncle. Is the main man for a generator. The world knows that. If you're paying eight cents to use the generator, and you're paying another couple cents for the barge, <laughs> what the generator sits on is how much you're paying for the fuel to run the generator 24/7. That's the black hole, Kevin. I am told GPL is producing with bunker safe fuel $28 a kilowatt. I am told this, this sword they bring to throw on Guyana to fuel that barge will cost Guyana more than $45 a kilowatt <laughs> for the fuel alone. <laughs> Oh, brother. Oh, uncle, I don't know what to say. This man doesn't have time to explain the deals they're making. But finding time for talk about Glenn Lal, Moses Nagamutu, Anthony Vera, the PNC, the AFC, and whoever write a letter in the press complaining about his management style or attack him. Or attack him. <laughs> Listen to what he said. Listen to a little piece of what he said about Moses Nagamutu and how long he talked yesterday. Play up. Now, in the last week, we have seen um, the reemergence of Moses Nagamutu. And um, to the launch of a book, Dear Land of Guyana. And there are mixed reviews of the book. So in the I didn't read the book, I must confess. So I am utilizing two sets of articles to fashion my comments. One in the Kaichou New the Starbuck News, and from Freddie Kisum, his, his letters, because he seemed to have read the book. So in the Kaicho and the Starbuck News, it says the book is his reflection of experiences he wants to share. It is my truth. And that is the most truthful part of the book. It is his truth. Now his truth, given the history of this country, 
has been known to generously depart from the objective truth. If you know Nagamoto. If you read Bill Carr's son, his Machu Carr, his book, you will, you should read it and you will see. Stop it, stop it. Stop it, Kevin. Uncle, it's 22 minutes of his press conference yesterday that man talked about Moses Nagamutu and his book. <laughs> My God. Look what this man find time to discuss. In an oil, gold, diamond, timber, bauxite rich country that is being raped and robbed of billions of American dollars yearly. Moses Nagamutu's book. And with that, uncle, I don't want to say anything more. They can't think straight no more. Everything they do got a curl in it. Nothing is straight and honest anymore. Oh, Uncle, I keep on begging you people, please listen to these leaders' press conferences. It is important for you to know the mindset of them and where they are deliberately taking this country with all of you inside. <coughs> Excuse me. This entire press conference, Uncle, will be played so you can listen how much more he had to say about Moses Nagamutu and his book. Please, I am begging you people. It's Friday. Listen to these people before you go to bed. You know, last night before I went to sleep, the sixth oil project flashed across my mind. And I said... Barra Jagde will hand Exxon Mobil this project in the middle of the night. Lo and behold, my brothers and sisters of this country, I woke up this morning and the first person to tell us that this project has been approved was Exxon Mobil. Then, Later in the day, the government put out a statement saying it has approved the sixth oil project. You know, Uncle, Kevin, something as big as this. This project is 12.7 billion American dollar. Every country would have been so proud so joyous to announce to their people and invite the press about this development instead instead I was told it was signed 3 a.m. this morning when even the dogs and the cats were asleep in this land. This is not shameful. This is beyond words to describe what Bharat Jagdev is doing to this nation with our oil industry. That project, the project cost, Uncle, that 12.7 billion, was not properly verified. We must see Don Gerab, we hold the whole country debt there, the 4.5 we get. We haven't gotten a cent more on that project. Full protection and compensation from an oil spill is not on that project. And I am betting my last dollar 
in my pocket. I give away Kaicho news. Bharat Jagdev, Ifan Ali, and Vikram Bharat has not fenced that six style project. Nothing has changed. So your life will remain the same. Barking in the streets, barking in your yards for a livable wage. Hmm. Late this afternoon, they sent out photographs showing Vikram Bharat and the representatives of Hess Corporation, the Chinese company Sinoc and ExxonMobil, all smiling. Big lifetime payday for them. Barajagdev and President Ali shame to put their faces in such a project. Put up, the fo put up the photograph, let them see it online. Is what me and you got to smile about, Uncle. I know I got nothing to smile about. But I know ExxonMobil will bring cricket and one and two RTs in Guyana. Whole dances. And I would not only be smiling, but y'all would be clapping and dancing over that. This is the lead story tomorrow, Uncle. And guess what? Guess the most sickening part of it. Barat Jagdev held press conference yesterday. Spends 22 minutes cussing Moses Nagamutu. Bews out Kaicho News. Bews down Vera. Bews down this one. And did not say a single word that he's going to approve the sixth oil project today. May God bless you all. And may he bless our leaders too. You're getting two barrels on every hundred barrel that pump up there. The world wants to help you change that. And Barajagdeo not only cursing the world, but setting conditions that does not help to renegotiate the contract. Simply put, he doesn't want anyone to help him renegotiate that contract. Why, Uncle and Auntie? Just in case you don't know, the name of that six oil project. It named Whiptail. Them smiling. While they're signing. And they will be smiling. While they're whipping at your tail. It named Whiptail. Massa Days is all over again. Have a great weekend. God bless you.